Hello again, this is Fiendish with DimensionTouring.com and for this installment of the Tinker Tools video guides we're going to be talking about the rotate function and along with that we'll also be discussing some rotational offsets in copy and paste and so let's get started okay when you look at the rotate window you'll see that there's the same spinny wheels that are in most of the other boxes and also you've got an absolute a relative as group and local axes now as group and lo local axes are only one or the other but as with everything there is more than one way to skin a cat and so there's more than one way to make round things now the vast majority of rift dimension items are square most of our building blocks are square so how do we take this square cube into something like this well there's more than one way to do it the first way is to take it and then with an absolute rotation set the bottom cube to a 45 degree angle and then copy and paste from there one at a time until you're all the way around this way it happens to take a long time and it's also how I learned how to do it it's how all of these were done including these arcs here because to make those arcs all I did was take an arch and then use pieces of it and then rotate it from rotate it in the directions that I wanted it to go and we'll go and how did we do that we'll get into that but first there's always the sec the other way to make an arch which is to use the connector tool which we already covered in previous videos But let's go back to this and what an absolute rotation is. Now if I have all these selected, because I've already rotated it one at a time, if I have all these selected and I try an absolute rotation, it's going to turn all the blocks 45, but not really do anything beyond that. Sometimes, if I have a whole group of items, it's not, it's going to take them and break them all apart. Uh, they'll rotate, each thing will rotate individually, uh, and just whatever I was trying to make will totally be messed up. But now, say I want to take this, and I want to turn it all on an angle. If I have relative and as group, and say I want to put it on a corner, now I've just rotated the whole thing 45 degrees. Or 90. Again in the yaw. Now, what is a local axis move? A local axis move means that I'm only going to turn it on one axis. Oops. Let's get rid of that extra one there. So let me select all of these that are flat. Let's change this. Let's try 45. Local axis, I'm only going to turn it on the on the yaw. Ta-da! And that's the easy way to make an arch with a beveled edge like this. So I've been doing it the hard way 
um, all this time. <laughs> so that's the good thing about learning about doing these videos is that I also learn how to do new things because I have never used uh, the local axis rotate function. So if I rotate it again, now it flattens out. And again, if I want to kill this flicker, I just need to do a slight move on every other cube. So that's the basics of how to use the rotate function. You can absolutely rotate something or do it in an increment. Now you can also, what those spinny wheels will do is if you, if you click something and you know, you, it'll show you what, a rota what rotation it's on here, but also if you click the radio buttons. Now if I hit reset, then it's gonna turn that block the right way. It's not gonna empty those, I have to backspace there. Now, as always, when I have multiple items selected, it's not going to show me anything that's only good for one item at a time. Now with the next video, we'll get a lot more into the actual copy and paste function. Um, but with rotating, we're going to still kind of start to bring it all together. And so say one of the things that I want to make is a spire roof. So I'm going to start by taking this plank and putting it in the 90. As this is where the rotational offsets will come in. So now I want to rotate it about 10 degrees. So I want to make a very uh, sharp edged, a very pointed spire. So now I'm going to do the other one, the second leg and we'll make it the opposite about like so. Now I'm going to wind up with a gap here and that's fine. Now to fill in and I'm going to wind up with a gap in the center. Now to fill in the center of these planks here I'm just going to use some rectangles to plug that hole. And then I can put a put a square or something at the base once it's all done. To, to level it out. Now no one's gonna see this from the inside, so it's not really gonna matter too much about how you know getting all the thickness is correct on all these different uh, building blocks. Okay, so this would count as one leg. So now what I want to do is a, is a rotation of about another 10 degrees. We'll go the other way. Okay. So now I'm going to copy and paste with the rotational offset. I want a leg just like this but to be opposite from it. So again, I'm going to copy and paste and then move it out. Now with both legs selected, another rotational offset to make the sides It doesn't matter which side you pick, but now you're going to have to, to um, even those out and line them up correctly. You can also do this one leg at a time, rotating each on the 90.
either way it's going to come out just as fast. Now for this piece in the middle, this hole in the middle, I can use a cube, I can use whatever uh, to kind of fill that hole. And Got my square. Clear out all the offsets. Get it centered. And now it's ready to go on top of whatever I want to put it on. So rotating with Tinker Tools, either using the rotate function or using copy and paste is not, does not have to be hard. As always, I'm going to say, I'm always going to recommend that you, you know, take your items, practice with the rotations, uh, you know, go ahead and, and use a test, test build and, and mess it, mess things up because uh, that's I think that's the best way to learn. I still cannot get enough of this. great way to make some interesting shapes, some neat effects, and then you know you can see that might not be what some what you would be intending to do, but in case it is, it's a good way, a good learning experience. And that is the basics of how to use the rotate function. Our next video will start to bring it all together and we'll move into copy and paste. And that will tie together uh, distance offsets, rotational offsets, scale offsets, as well as, you know, bringing in the offset calculator, starting to use rescan, starting to use, you know, pretty much every other function will work through copy and paste but we did cover the basics of this here i hope it was helpful and until next time happy building